cover has become perhaps an enduring image of the tragedy, showing the victim's failed attempt to get out of the way of the oncoming train. Now, many of those who saw that are asking why no one was able to get him off the tracks. The person who's faced perhaps the most scrutiny is the photographer who took the picture, R. Omar Abbasi. He joins me now in a live primetime exclusive. I appreciate you being with us. Thank you. you before, having before we start, you, you had wanted us to make clear that we are not, we're not paying you for this interview. You did not request us. Uh, you did not request any money. Um, nor, of course, would we ever pay for an interview, but, right. uh, but you wanted us to make Correct. that clear. Um, at what point did you realize something was going on? I mean, did, there was an altercation between this man, Mr. Han, and this other, uh, the alleged suspect. Right. Uh, did you see him being, did you see that altercation? No, I had entered the subway uh, station from the 46th side, 47th Street. And I had uh, walked in about 100 feet into the station. I was not aware of any confrontation. And uh, from my peripheral vision, I saw a body being flung onto the tracks. And there was a collective gasp that went into the air that really got my attention. You could actually kind of hear a gasp from other people. Uh, correct. Because uh, the train travels from north to south. And I was at the southern end. So you know, somehow the wind and the sound travels that way. About how far away were you from, from Mr. Hahn? I can guess uh, from now on hindsight and looking at the photograph with how many cars were into it and where mm -hmm. Mr. Hahn's was. I was about 100 feet into the station and uh, I have learned that the New York subway station is about 600 feet. Mm -hmm. So probably Mr. Hahn's from the entrance there, he was maybe another 100 feet. So mm -hmm. there is about, I would say, 400 feet. You had your camera in your hand. Yes. Sir. You were there uh, for another assignment. You weren't there. Uh, I mean, you just happened to be there. Correct. Um, what was your initial reaction? What did you instantly start to do? Well, people started waving their hands and uh, screaming because a few moments earlier, they had made an announcement that the train will be approaching the station. And uh, I could see the distant lights of the appro approaching train. From where I was, I could have screened my lungs out. Probably nobody would have heard it. And I had my, since my camera is always in my hand and it is always on, and it goes into sleep mode. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only way I thought at that moment was to start clicking away, releasing the shutter that will fire the flash. And so maybe you thought that might warn the conductor? Uh, yes, make him aware that there's, this is unusual occurrence, why is there's a burst of light hitting him and uh, catch Mr. Hans on the track. Were you, were you, were you looking through the viewfinder? No, no, no. It was, you know, stable, you know, and, and what you call on the street as shooting from the hip. Or so you had just the camera out, just sh shooting uh, like that? No, out here, you know, oh, shoot, out to uh, side. yeah, to the side, you know, stable and shooting. And I understand you said that there were other people who were much closer to him than, than you were. Yes, absolutely. And, and I mean, I've been in situations where, in riots, where people have been beaten in front of me, killed in front of me. I've, I've been in situations where I've taken pictures of it. I've been in situations where I've intervened. And you never know. And I, I personally believe until you have been in this situation, it's very easy to sit at home and judge based on pictures and say, oh, well, I would do this. But until you've been in a situation where there's a potential threat to yourself, you don't know how you're going to react. Did you, did you realize there had been an altercation? Did you realize that there was a suspect? Uh, and did you see that suspect? I got a blur of uh, the suspect. And uh, I had imagined, you know, we, we all imagined what we would do in a situation like that. But when you, one is in a situation, or at least myself, when the situation actually happened, I, instinct took over and all those plans that you do this, you do that, they, you rea one reacts. And that is what I reacted. And that is the best way I thought that I should could alert the conductor. And I started moving towards or uh, running towards Mr. Han. And uh, I saw a man approaching me, and that was the person who had pushed Mr. Han. And I realized because he seemed agitated. And as he was approaching, he was uh, cursing or using profanities. And he went by me, and I saw him coming. I braced myself and stood on the side. You were actually worried about him Pushing, doing something to you. Yeah, pushing me onto the tracks, realizing that he has he had just pushed uh, Mr. Hans on so, the tracks. So you're, running, you're going toward Mr. Han, 
but this man is coming toward you, the yes, suspect. Correct. So you go against the wall. Correct. So the suspect is actually moving away from Mr. Han, and there are other people who are closer who the suspect is moving away from. So theoretically, if there were, if other people were to get involved, they were closer to Mr. Han and farther away from the suspect than you were. Correct. That is a, a correct analysis. So uh, I also understand that after Mr. Hong was hit, and there was a, apparently a, a, a doctor present, or there was a lady who was a doctor, I believe, um, right. started doing CPR. Someone else in the crowd started doing CPR. People in the crowd gathered around and were actually, with their cell phone cameras, were taking pictures. Yes, they were. The crowd totally c closed on, and uh, I had to stand and try to move them back. At that, um, at that point, were you still taking pictures? I moved them back. I took maybe a few shots of the stretcher, and mm -hmm. uh, the w the firemen had come, and uh, there was some crowd control going on. In retrospect, do you feel you should have done something different, or could have done something different? Till one is in that situation, it is ve it's very hard to say. And uh, on hindsight, I would say I would had said, Mr. Han, run the other direction, and looking at the image uh, on it, there were only about three cars into the station. And all he had to do was outrun three cars, and he would have left. His wife had early reports that he had been drinking. I believe some alcohol was found on him as well, so it's unclear what his... I'm not aware of that, right. and I'm not aware of his uh, interaction with his wife. Right. Um, for, for you... What has this been like? I mean, not only to witness an event like this is horrific, but then to come under the kind of criticism you have come under from people who were not there, wh what is that like? They were not there. They are, you know, I, I look at them as uh, armchair critics, and uh, when you're in a situation, you realize what it is, and it was a very fluid situation. The photographs are still. You see the train, and you see Mr. Hans at one, at one spot. But in reality, the train is moving towards him. I do not know what speed it is, but it was really fast. Uh, the whole thing happened re really fast. I also find it interesting, because I read your account in the New York Post the next day, which I found uh, changed the way I, I looked at the situation, frankly, when right. I heard your account. Right. Um, and, and that's why I wanted to have you on, because I think sure. it's important to hear your voice on this. But you didn't even know what photos you had you brought the police back to the post office, and they looked at the photos. Correct. You really had no idea what you had captured. Uh, no, no idea. And uh, the, these photos are dark. I'm a professional, you know, I take good photographs, if I may say for myself. And these photographs were dark because my camera had the settings of Times Square. It was a bright day, and so was my flash gun. If I had set my camera to take photographs in a subway, then I'd be firing at full power. And uh, the flash gun doesn't uh, recharge so fast on full power unless I'm carrying a battery pack on my waist. H have you ever seen somebody being killed before? No, I have never. And it's a very traumatic experience. And uh, it's like every time, if I have to narrate the whole thing, it's uh, reliving it. I did not sleep for close to 36 40 hours. And, and obviously we talked about his funeral to, to, to his family. What would you say? I, as uh, I have said earlier that uh, Mrs. Hans, if I could had, I would have saved him. It wasn't important to get the photograph. The photograph came out as a result of my effort or what I could think at that moment to do. Even at this moment, I think, you know, I wish I had the presence of mind to say, Mr. Hans, run in the other direction. I did hear people saying, get up, get up. But uh, I don't know why anyone did not reach out. I lived the, with the image. The first night I could not sleep. I could hear the sounds. Uh, I don't want to be too graphic about it for respect for the family, but I could hear all the sounds. Mr. Han did not scream or anything. This is how fast it transpired. Uh, you look at the photograph and it's like, uh, it's chilling to me even today. It's like a man looking at his end and uh, the oncoming train, the meta metaphor for it, death staring him down.
you obviously didn't have a say in where the photo was published in terms of it being on, on the front page of the, of the paper, so I'm not even going to really ask you about that. But I guess, um, and again, I, I, my, you know, my position on this is, and it really has sort of changed from when I first saw the image, is until you're in a situation, you really don't know what someone has gone through. Uh, correct. And, and um, I, uh, you know, I'm sorry you were in that situation, and uh, I appreciate you coming on to talk about Thank it. Thank you very much yeah. for having me. Thank you.